sight in a laboratory late one night. There began the story. Lightning flashed and something missed. The poor old crazy scientist had dropped a bag of jelly beans into his Frankenstein machine, and Shrimpenstein was created in just half the time. Oh, 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 I must be getting taller. Oh, hello, hello out there. No need to thank me for once again bringing all this gay, madcap humor into your homes. That's what we're here for. And oh, by the way, regular viewers and lucky members of the Shrimpenstein fan club, I have some news which may disturb a few of you. I'm punishing Shrimpy today for failing to clean his room and refusing to finish his crew his creamed, his creamed rutabagas left. I can't say it. How can I expect him to eat it? All right. But anyway, he's being punished, so I'm not letting him on the show today. Well, I can see through the miracle of our Transylvanian two-way cameras that you are a bit concerned, but don't worry. Shrimpy won't be missed. You still have me, and you know how entertaining that I can be. Well, wait a minute. Get away from those TV sets. Don't turn those dials. All right, you bunch of sore heads. I was only joshing. Just relax. Sit back and resume your customary drooling while I wake your glorious leader. Up with the old bull switch. <laughs> Good. What's this rope for? Nobody ever explained that. <laughs> Little zappy. I angered the gods again. Did you hear them? Oh, they... Oh! 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 We almost had a little scene there. All right. Upsy daisy, shrimpy, my boy. Upsy daisy? Upsy daisy, that's what I said. What's with an upsy daisy, Jazz? Upsy daisy? Why, that was just an expression. Oh, oh. I, I didn't understand. Yes, I guess I did slip into the vernacular. Where? Where what? Where'd you slip on a Dracula? I didn't slip on a Dracula. I said I slipped into the vernacular. Oh, well, I hope you didn't hurt yourself. I know that stuff can be pretty slimy when it gets on your shoe. Shrimpy, what are you babbling about? By slipping into the vernacular, I meant I was using slang. Slang? Well, you know what slang is, don't you? Oh, yeah. Sure. That's what you had on your arm when you slipped in the vernacular on Boss City and fell down there. No, you little stoop. That was a sling. Sure, it was a sling. And that's a past tense. A sling is slang, right? Right. Sling, slang, slung. You know, you're right. It is sling, slang, slung. Just like ring, rang, rung. And sing, sang, sung. And fling, flang, flung. And bing, bang, bong. And sting, stang, stung. And <laughs> ming, mang, mung. And ding, dang. Will you get out of here, Klaus? <laughs> At the sound of the magic chimes, it will be exactly 25 o'clock and 42 seconds. Ding, ding, ding. Get out, Ding Dong. Okay, King Kong. Now, Shrimpy, what were we talking about? I have it the foggiest idea. I had a terrible throbbing in my head from all that ring of dinging. Oh, you mean the tintinabulation of the bells? The uh, what? Well, that's from a poem by Poe. You've read Poe, haven't you? Oh, yeah, Poe Richard's Almanac. No, no, I mean Edgar Allan Poe. He wrote a poem about bells, the tintinabulation of the bells. Bells, bells, the ringing and the clinging and the clanging of the bells. The swinging and the dinging and the winging of the bells. Yes. The ringing and the banging and the zanging of the bells. The bonging and the donging and the zonging of the bells. I dig them ring-a-ding bells. Oh, oh I've, I've got, got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, as I go riding merrily along. Ah. You rang? What? Hey, you guys. What? Well, you cut it out. If I hear one more bell, I'll scream. Oh, don't tell me that. I will tell you. Ah! Ah! Stop it! Thanks. I needed that. Sorry, my boy. It was the only way. Oh, hello? Hello? Oh, what? Oh, that's excellent. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> and who was that? Asked the foolish green kid, knowing the answer would send us winging into the flabby premise for today's show. Well, that was Langstaff's restaurant supply. They're delivering my pans today. Oh, good, good. I always hate it when you run around here without any. No, you don't understand. These are pizza pans. Oh, yeah. I love that show. 
What show? How about Pizza Pan and Tinkerbell and Captain Hook and Wendy? Not Peter Mary Pan, you little nut. These are pans for making pizza. Oh, neato. We'll have a pizza for dinner. No, not exactly. Yeah, we'll have a pizza for breakfast. No, we, we won't. We're not going to eat up all of the profits. Profits? You mean... Exactly. But then... I said... But who... But she... What I... And they... I all could... right, listen. <laughs> we are going into business. The pizza business? Exactly. And we'll prepare for the grand opening of our new pizza parlor right after these appetizing words from Kool-Aid and Bunny Man. Bunny Man? Be quiet. <laughs> Look at me way up here. Whoops! I'm the Kool-Aid Bunny Man, coming to town with hundreds of prizes for the Kool-Aid Lucky Flavor Sweepstakes. <laughs> That's a lot of toys to land with, even for a powerful bunny like me. I've got ideal motorific torture tracks for boys and tiny Thumbelina dolls for girls. Hundreds of prizes free for the winners in the Kool-Aid Lucky Flavor Sweepstakes. All you need to enter is an empty package of your favorite Kool-Aid flavor with your name and address inside each package. Make sure it's Kool-Aid. Or write Kool-Aid in your favorite flavor on a piece of paper with your name and address. I'll be picking a winner every day for every Kool-Aid flavor, so send in as many flavors as you can to, uh, to, uh, it's right on the tip of my ear. <laughs> can you read it? I can read it, Bunny Man. It says, mail your entries to Kool-Aid, Paramount, California. Starting next Monday, May 22nd, Bunny Man will be picking winners every day in every flavor. And remember, the more entries you send in, the more flavors you send, the more your chances of winning. And now, let's hear from the good folks at Kellogg's. Here comes another Kellogg cereal picture. It's little Tony. The little tiger. On roller skates. Big Tony's teaching him to live it up. Live it up? What does that mean? Uh, to have fun. To have fun eating Kellogg's sugar frosted flakes. Let's sing it. Live it up, corn it up, sweeten it up with sugar frosted flakes. Live it up with Kellogg's sugar frosted flakes. Who knows the Kellogg's Raisin Bran song? We do! You start with the grapes under the sun. I'll be the grape. That's cheating! Turn them to raisins one by one. Raisins? We sugar the raisins made from the grapes. Mix them with bran, the crisp golden flakes. Kellogg's Raisin Bran. The raisiniest bran under the sun. I wanted to be the sun anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, say, Doc, whatever gave you this wild idea? Well, you know, the mad scientist business is getting pretty dull. I thought it would be a good idea to broaden my horizon. If your horizon gets any broader, you won't even be able to get through the Iron Maiden. Don't be impudent. Impudent? I said, not... listen, I said imp impudent. I don't know what I said, you little snip. Anyway, I took a survey, and I discovered what we need most around here. And do you know what that is? Yeah! A plumber! Klaus, you stupid nit. What do we need a plumber for? It's Harry. He's lost his appetite. But a plumber won't help him. It wouldn't hide him. Listen, it sounds like Harry needs a doctor. Tell me, how long ago did he lose his appetite? About five minutes ago. Five minutes? Yeah, ever since he fell in the garbage disposal. Get him out of there! Now, what was I saying before that bloated fuzzball interrupted me? You said you took a survey. I did? Oh, yes, I did. And you know what this country needs is Von Stick's authentic, old-fashioned pizza parlor. But, Docker, do you know anything about making pizza? Do I know anything about making pizza? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't. No, I don't. No, yes, I do. Listen, I am an expert at preparing foods of every nation. And years ago, I learned the secret of great pizza from the old master himself, Anzalone Sulprizio. Gee, was he a, a famous Italian chef? No, he was a tail gunner on a beer truck during Prohibition. <laughs> Doc? <laughs> you know, you know what's black and blue and found in the East River? No, what? Guys who tell Italian jokes. Yes, <laughs> all right, no more of those. All right, it's time I practiced up on my famous pizza recipe. Klaus, oh Klaus! What, oh what? Bring me my pizza ingredients. Now, Shrimpy, watch closely as I, Rudolfo Sticarino, make some of the best pizza this side of Palermo. Blinky? 
<laughs> no, I got something in my eye. <laughs> All right, Klaus. Here we are. Here we are. Let me, let me have the dough. No, you had a line there. See? Oh, <laughs> that dough. <laughs> See that? No, I'm Tap City, baby. I ain't got a quarter. I mean the pizza dough you That's were. what I gave you. I was just making a hilarious. <laughs> okay, make your hilarious. Look at that. <laughs> Never mind that giggling. Will you look at the size of that thing? Did <laughs> I hurt you, honey? <laughs> there we are. Okay. All right. Now the rolling pin. Okay. Okay. And stop it. And now the flower. Not this kind of a flower, Klaus. I made another hilarious, though, didn't I? Yes, you made another hilarious. All right, now, give me the flower. There you go, kid. Why did you do that, Klaus? Oh, you didn't want me to take it out of the bag? No, you fuzzy schmo. Give me that bag of flowers. There you go. Give me that. I hate him. Wait a minute. I can't see anything. <laughs> oh, the weather outside's delightful. And Klaus is really frightful. All right. Here we go. <laughs> and now, here's how we experts make the dough nice and thin. Pull it out. Woohoo! What did it do? <laughs> what are you beating it up for? <laughs> That's what you have to do. I'm not speaking to you. All right. <laughs> Look at that. Am I making a beautiful abits? Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Yes. Woohoo! Not bad. And now, here's how we pizza experts really get a nice, crisp, thin pizza. It's called the pizza flip. And the higher you flip it, the better it is. Are you ready for this? Hey! <laughs> A nice flip, Doc! Help! Help! The sky is falling in! <laughs> hey, look at that! Harry was sleeping on the rafters and a pizza landed right on him! Uh, uh, bring that pizza back, Harry! Red alert! Red alert! Quick, get me General Turkey Lurkey in Washington! Boy, uh, that's funny! With that pizza wrapped around him, he looks like a flying chicken enchilada! Come back here with that pizza, you thieving foul! He flew out the window, Ducky! Uh, I guess you'll have to make another one! Oh, all right. While I make another pizza, let's watch this tasty message from the folks at Hostess. If I see that chicken... That's for sure. New Ding Dongs from Hostess. New Hostess Ding Dongs in a convenient zip-open box. Round devil's food cake sandwiches, all covered with smooth, chocolatey frosting. With creamy white filling inside. Twelve to the box. Enough for everybody. Look, each Hostess Ding Dong is foil-wrapped, stays fresher, tastes fresher, Stays neater in lunch boxes, too. Chocolatey frosted Hostess Ding Dongs with soft white filling inside. Get the big 12 pack for your family. Tell me, what do you want to be when you grow up? Maybe you want to be a fireman. So Charlie Chucks found out what you have to do to become one. After you finish high school, you'll have to take a test to get into fireman school. For example, in one test, you'll have to run up to a six-foot wall and scale it. Then you run through a maze of obstacles and a tunnel, too. You'll have to lift over 80 pounds on your shoulders. That's in case you ever have to carry anyone. If you want to be ready for these tests, here's what you should do. You should eat all the good foods your mother serves. And mother, to make sure your children get all of their vitamins, give them chewable, pillow-shaped, fruit-flavored chocks. Chocks are easy to take, and they'll give your children all the vitamins they normally need to take. If they want to be a fireman, a policeman, a teacher, or a mad scientist, whatever they want to be, make sure they get their vitamins now with chocks. Ha! How about that? A girls' club offers both safety and fun to growing girls. Support yours. Hey, Bats! Bats, come up here. I've got some exciting news. Look who it is, Chico. I'd recognize her anywhere. It's Aunt Jemima. Listen, you wise guys, 
you are looking at the proprietor of Transylvania's newest and finest pizza parlor. Doesn't mean a thing to us, Dickie. Yes, we vampire types stick to a liquid diet, if you know what we mean. You mean you're not going to sample my wares? Sorry, Simon Simpleton. We might sing an appropriate song for your grand opening. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Angelina, how about another Aunt Pasta? That's a nice. I Aunt the Pasta twice just because she is so nice, Angelina. Angelina! Angelina! The waitress at the pizzeria. Pizzeria! I keep a zoop in the strong just to be with her alone, Angelina. Angelina, the waitress at the pizzeria. Oh, dear boy, you've been. Angelina, I adore you. Evil, you've been. Angelina, I live for you. And passion. Very good, Bat Finks. Here, have a have a little dough. <laughs> now, oh, I killed him! Ha <laughs> ha! All right. And now to remind you all about something that's very dear to all of us: the Shrimpenstein Monster Fan Club. Now we're getting lots of letters, but we'd like a lot more. Now here's what you get when you join: you get your own membership card and a place for your name and your own private number on the back with a secret Shrimpenstein fan club code. You also get a recording of our theme song, and on every jacket is an autographed picture of Shrimpy and me, suitable for framing. <laughs> yes, and you also get 15 monster green stamps. You know how you love those. And every month, you get a mini letter telling you about wonderful activities and special privileges that you can only enjoy when you belong to the Shrimpenstein fan club. Now, here's how you join. Just send a... Yes? <laughs> the dough almost came back. Woo! All right, here's how you join Shrimpy's fan club. Send a dollar to Shrimpenstein, P.O. Box 3031, Hollywood, California, 90028. And on your return address, include your own zip code number so that your card and good stuff will get to you as soon as possible. Okay. And now, where am I going? <laughs> I was going to walk out. How are we going to have what now? Wilfred's window! Rotham Wilfred! Ah, Wilfred, your famous shot of a treetop. Yes. And a, and a lake. Oh, it's a moose. That's right. Yes. I shoot these films, so it proves to the tax man I'm really on location, see? Are you bothered by the tax man? Well, life is very taxing for a wolf, I'll tell you that. I bet it is. Well, you really captured the moose at rest. I waited hours to catch a loose moose. I didn't know mooses liked water. Isn't it meese? No, it's water. Oh, huh. I guess it is. Well, one, one moose doesn't like to go in the water, does he? Yeah, well, down at the moose lodge, he used to, used to be surrounded by something a little stronger in water, see? Oh, I bet he is. What is he doing in the water, anyway? Washing. For the first time in his life, he feels really clean. Like he was eating something under the water there. Yeah, well, sometimes they swim down there and bite themselves on the foot. Why do they do that? Well, if you don't do it in the water, people say, look at that moose biting himself on the foot and get embarrassed. Oh, it's silly if you do it out of the water. Well, what's that? I can't see what's going on there, Wilfred. Oh, there's a bird. Yeah. See, a, he a friend of the moose? Well, sort of, yeah. Yes, they seem to know each other. 
say he's got a business going on upstream a bit. What kind of business? I sell second-hand animals, factory closeouts, retech, stuff like that. Oh, yeah, business must be good the way they're running and swimming. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you can't be serious. They don't have a business like that. Yeah, picked up a good used yak. Only had 4,000 miles on him. Needed a ring job and points. Oh, is that so? Oh, yeah. Ain't much point to a yak. Not many yaks in this film either, Wilfred. Well, the moose is tired of the water. Now where is she going? To the local taxidermist. Well, what for? To get a hunter's head mounted. Don't you think they collect things, too? I never thought of it. Oh, there's a mountain lion. Hey, do they like moose meat? Oh, yeah. They can catch it on the hoof. Gotta watch out. That moose has big horns. Yeah. They grow those at certain times of the year, and then they sell them for hat racks. Fascinating. Well, what's that fuzzy stuff on their horns? Well... When the horns first grow out, they're soft and they have fuzz on them. See, then the fuzz leaves just like, just like they did on the strip, and the horns harden. Well, that's very really interesting. Where'd you read that? On a card that funny little man's holding there. Oh, seems like the moose was trying to rub the fuzz off. Yeah, that's why I called him Beatnik. Oh, you're so silly, Wilfred. You know, I don't think that lion is after the moose after all. Oh, yeah. He is, eh? Yeah, no, not really. Moose burgers aren't the tastiest dish around. No, well, I'd prefer to that boiled owl that the bats made for me the other day. Yeah. I think I'd prefer to that possum pudding they made for me. Well, then, you mean that mooses or meeses, they don't kill other animals. They, they're not predators. No, no. They eat greens and browns and fruits and vegetables and TV dinners down at the lodge. Oh, then they just spend the day and night eating and sleeping and what else? Yeah, blowing their horns. Oh. Oh, look, they're up in the snow country. Different right. time of year was this, eh? Yeah. Disney took them up there for some wild shots. Oh, you mean these animals are actors? Oh, yeah, sure. Right from uh, animal casting. Two of them cats had their own show last year. It's called uh, Moose Noose. Very big in the high country. Yes, and very high in the big country. Yeah. Yes. Well, who listens to them up there? Oh, all them woodland pixies and elves and gnomies and brownies. <laughs> oh, they have them up there, too. Oh, sure. Say, hey, what's that hanging down in the moose's face there? That's a uh, psychedelic uh, animal earrings, LSD pops. Oh, yes. Well, whatever, Wilfred. Say, hey, with, with ugly jowls like that, how could they be attractive to their mates? Oh, well, uh, they're attractive because they cher carry chewing tobacco in there, saying everybody likes it. Listen, I gotta go. I hope so. Oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, Wilfred. Let's uh, remind, remind everyone tonight on, at 7.30 on Million Dollar Movie, right here on good old Channel 9. Five. See that? No, it's Channel oh, 9. nine yeah. <laughs> See, the human duplicators, an exciting science fiction film that's every bit as classy as 4D Man. You remember that oh, one? Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 boy, is that a good one. I'll watch it, because you'll love it. All right. And now, you know, that was an excellent bit of filmic flim-flam, Wilfred. You talk like a mongoose with a hoof and mouth disease, sir. But mongooses don't have hooves. I'm glad you asked me about that. About what? I did, too. Well, you'd never mind. Just stop that babbling, and we got to tell our friends that this is the last day of the Draw Wilfred Contest. Oh, my golly. Yes, Monsterinos, if you haven't got your entry in, get it in right away. This is the last day to draw a picture of what you think Wilfred looks like and a chance to win some fabulous prizes That's during right. Hormel's... What? I said that's right. Oh, yes. Sure. You can win bicycles, transistors, Wilford t-shirts, and the grand prize, a trip for your entire family to San Diego's Mission Bay and the famous San Diego Zoo and SeaWorld and stay at a Mission Bay Resort Hotel. Yeah, and here's, tell them how to enter. I will. Here's how you enter. If you're 16 years or younger, just draw a picture of Wilford and send it to Draw Wilford Contest, P.O. Box 38190, Hollywood, California. Be sure and write your name and address and your age and phone number on the back of each picture or pick up an official Hormel Wiener entry blank from your supermarket. All entries must be postmarked by midnight tonight. Did That's you hear right. that? Or we'll kill you. All right. And don't forget to stock up on monstrous energy and bodybuilding protein with delicious Hormel all-meat wieners featured this week at all Bonds Markets. Ladies and gentlemen, before your very eyes, the Quaker Oats Company will now introduce two new cereals. I'm Crisp, the Crisp new cereal from outer space. The biggest selling cereal from Saturn to Alpha Centauri. Crisp is sugary sweet and vitamin charged to give you crazy energy. 
What's new with you? I am Quake, the power serial from inner space. Here at the Earth's core, I make Quake with deep down sweetness and vitamins to give you the power of an earthquake. Get Quake. Quake is better. Uh, fellas, why not leave it to the kids out there? Take sides with either Quake or Quisp. Or Quake. Or Quisp. Two new cereals from Quaker. <laughs> sort of a breakfast feud. Well, boys, we're all set now. The ad broke in the paper, and our sign is up outside. Uh, tell me once more how the organization works, will you, Doc? Why, sure, Shrimp. You're the cashier and head waiter. I am, co am of course, the chef. And Klaus will handle the takeout orders and the delivery. Oh! Answer that, Klaus. It may be our first customer. Oh, sticky super pizza featuring an infinite variety of delicious delicacies like mother couldn't make us. He practiced for 100 years. Open till 10 o'clock, seven days a week, Monday through Friday. Tables for ladies. Watch your hat and coat. We deliver. Your order, please. Klaus, is it a customer? I don't know. They hung up. Well, I don't blame them. Now, never mind the long speech. Just say, sticky super pizza and shut up. Okay. All right, get it. Hello, Sticky Super Pizza, and shut up! You idiot. It worked! They shut right up! Klaus, you're ruining everything! Hello, Sticky Su Oh, hello, Mrs. Spiegelman. Yes, sir. Coming right up. <laughs> Klaus, is it an order? Yeah, one medium pepperoni and cheese to go! One medium pepperoni and cheese to go! One medium pepperoni and cheese to go! <laughs> We're gonna get rid of that echo. Yes, get rid of something. Oh, am I excited! Our first order, I've got one ready right here just to put the finishing touches on it. You know something? This is our first order. I'm not gonna give them a plain old pepperoni. I'm gonna give them a sticky special with everything on it. Yes, what can we put on it here? Yes, a toad. And here's a, oh, a mousy. They'll love a mousy on it. And here's a snail and a nice fat spider. That's good. There we are. And, and we'll put, Bernard, what are you doing in there? You're not supposed to be in there. All right. Ha ha! They're gonna love it. And now, a little... Wait a minute. <laughs> nice propping. A little extra cheese on it. Yes, load it up with cheese, because that's what makes it super good. Ho ho! And now, pop it in the old oven. Cook it instantly with ten zillion volts. <laughs> it's enough! You wanna burn it? Ignorant zapper. Oh, it... You don't get any for that. Oh, is this beautiful. Mrs. Spiegelman is just gonna love this pizza. Ha-ha. <laughs> A few more secret ingredients. And get a box for... Oh, hello, Myron. <laughs> hey, did you come in for some pizza? Yeah. Oh, not that one. No, no. That belongs to Mrs. Spiegelman. You'll have to wait your turn. You can. Myron! Myron, wait a minute! That's not yours! Give me that pizza! Oh! <laughs> this is the new electronic test center at Bill Murphy Buick. Here, the newest, most advanced automotive testing equipment makes over 100 separate tests on each used car. had dropped a bag of jelly beans into his Frankenstein machine and Shrimpenstein was created in just half the time.
Welcome to the Shrimp and Stein Show, you grubby little Grammys out there. Shut up. I'll jolt the little green goon awake, and we'll start...